I've noticed this trend for a long time. When there is an outbreak of violence or terrorism, wherever it is or whatever spin is put on it, we often hear of rapid deployment military teams who go in to meet violence with violence. And that seems to be the first thing we're, we're given. Uh, once an incident occurs, it's very hard to put the genie back in the bottle. And the truth is often lost in the shuffle. Sometimes it takes years for the truth to finally come out. And I was wondering why we can't have a rapid deployment peace force that could go mm -hmm. to areas where incidents happen and try to root out the truth before we turn it into another war or another disaster. I very much like the way you formulated it. Of course we can have that. But be aware of the fact that to solve and to identify and solve a conflict is not so easy. However, it doesn't take that much time. You go into an area, you start with those who obviously are parties to the conflict. And you ask them, with whom else shall I talk? And if you do that again and again and again, and I'll give you just some small hints about how to do it, suddenly you know more than anybody else about the situation. For heaven's sake, don't read a book about that area before. You become a slave of that author. Try to let the party speak to you. And try to understand that there is no one truth. There are truths in plural. The way we go about it, the Transcend Method, is that the first question is, what is the Afghanistan you would like to live in? Future constructive. Then we go to past, present, destructive. What's happening? Now, they're usually much better at point two than point one. People are not good at talking about future, and they're not good at talking about constructive but you can help them. When you ask them what's happening, they will go on endlessly and they'll tell you how bad the other side is. So it will be relatively black-white. With women being better at the yin-yang aspect. Then the third point, was there a period in the past that was good? And the Afghan will tell you about the golden age. It was a certain period, roughly speaking, from the, let us say, yeah, I would put it that way, from the end of the Second World War to the communist takeover. And the fourth question is, what are you most afraid of for the future? So future destructive. Now do that, and you know an enormous amount. <laughs> the first time I did it was in 1967 for the Council of Europe. I was asked to explore possibilities of peace in Europe. And fortunately, they didn't have any money. Because if they had had money, we would probably have had a public opinion survey, which is not a good method. You see, the dialogue with back and forth and so on is much better. So I had access to only one person in 19 countries, in each country. The question is, which person? So we agree that foreign ministers come and go, prime ministers come and go, the head of the political department of the foreign office. There was a young man in the uh, United States of America and Washington called the Brzezinski. He is about my age, and um, uh, he had no idea about me, but I asked him very constructive questions. He had extremely constructive ideas, come through much more charmingly than he otherwise usually does. And the young man on the other side in Moscow was Yuri Valentsov, known for the walks in the woods around Geneva, the chief negotiator there. And suddenly I was sitting there, 19 countries, 25 questions for each, and he knew more than anybody else. Nobody else had done it. And suddenly I looked at the matrix, and you know, I mean, being an intellectual, you would imagine that I had 25 questions there and 19 countries there, looking at it. They were all like the UN, UN Economic Commission for Europe. 
And they all said our biggest problem is security. So I said, how about the UN Security Commission for Europe? Uh, that was called brilliant and prophetic. Not at all, I was just reading my matrix. It became the Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe. It started the day I read that matrix. And Brzezinski, without knowing it, contributed to it. Now, you can train people in that. Send 100 of them into Syria. Let them have 100 dialogues blossom. Much better than monitoring ceasefire, which I won't be able to do anyhow, because, you know, when you're hiding a needle in a haystack, you have to be a haystack specialist to find it. And these people come from the outside. And there is no such thing as ceasefire. They're only redeploying and smuggling in new arms because they have no solution. You have to have a solution, a compelling solution on the wall. And the suggestion you have, the rapid deployment peace force could do that. But they would have to know how to do it. So I have given you one image. I'm not at all insisting this is the only one. I'm just saying that's my experience. 